So one of the strategies that I use on the farm to produce as much vegetables as possible in a very short time period and a very small land base is to keep the ground planted at all times. Now that's easier said than done. It's complicated to do that. It's not as simple as just throwing seeds in the ground whenever you feel like it. Um, but if you know your crops well enough and you know the timing of them well enough, it becomes easier over time. And that just takes experience and getting good at growing in your growing season, in your climate, in your context, because there's so many factors involved in that part. But what I do when I don't have enough time to stick to my original plan and things change, I grow these five crops and just direct seed them in the ground with my push seeder. But if you're doing this in your garden, you literally take the seeds, sow them, and water them in, and you will almost guaranteed get a crop. Because with my lifestyle, or with my farm, things don't go according to plan all the time. I run out of time to seed the correct amount of spinach to plant in a bed or something. You know, when my original plan is usually to have seeds going into plant trays in my nursery so I have a plant ready to go on the ground, but that doesn't always work out. And sometimes you have an opportunity to plant a crop that you didn't have time to plant the starts ahead of time. And what I've got right here is an example of that. These were shallots that were ready earlier than I expected. So we harvested the whole bed of shallots, both of these beds on Monday. And now I direct seeded some of the crops I'm about to talk about that most likely will produce at least one cut before our growing season ends because our growing season is ending in about two to three weeks so if you know these crops off the top of your head and you have the seeds ready to go they're a handy tool in your arsenal to fill your garden space with food at all times and they're very low maintenance, low stress, once you learn a couple little things that you have to navigate with them. But without further ado, let's get into the crops. Okay, so this is one of my all-time favorite crops, Hakurai salad turnips. And what these are, are a really quick growing turnip that are ready in about 38 days. Um, and they grow into this beautiful golf ball to softball size turnip. They could grow as big as a softball in like 50 days. And all you got to do is germinate them right, which is actually kind of tricky depending on what's going on. They don't like to germinate well when it's super hot, but when it's, when the temperature's just right, they germinate great. And then they grow really big, really fast. And the beautiful thing about these is once you get them to grow well like this, you could cut the greens off just like this and store them in your fridge for three months. So if you're running out of time in your growing season, you could throw a couple of these seeds in the ground, germinate them, and you know whatever bare space you have left in your garden, throw these seeds in the ground and you will probably need to get some of this insect netting because there's root maggots that want to tunnel into these turnips. They're the biggest pest with these. Um, I've never seen anything get eaten more by root maggots than these turnips. But once you have those two problems solved, this is an incredibly easy one to grow and it's fast it fills up space and puts food in your fridge quick and it tastes delicious. It's like a, it's like an apple almost. It's really sweet, very popular for me at the farmer's market. Um, and it's just a game changer because a real turnip, a regular turnip 
I believe those take like 50 days or more. I've never even grown those because it's just not worth it for me on, in my business. But this is a really good, just put food on the table crop that you can plant up until about 40 days away from your first frost. And you'll get away with it, most likely. So definitely grow hawker eye salad turnips. All right, so we're in my tomato greenhouse right now and uh, we always have this bed not planted with tomatoes it's usually some kind of different crop like summer squash or something and then I usually put in a crop of radishes in between our winter planting because radishes are so fast radishes are a great crop to fill in space and time because they're 21 days to maturity, especially a French breakfast radish. Not all radishes are quite that fast, but this is one of the faster ones. And we grow a ton of this for our business. Um, I love planting it at the end of the season because it's a lot less likely to get eaten by flea beetles and root maggots. It just seems to produce a lot better for me in my context. Uh, I'm sure other contexts are different. But if you're running out of time in your growing season, radishes are a game changer one because you know a lot of the stuff i'm talking about is salad greens which is great but you know you're not going to want to you can't live off salad greens but radishes and turnips can put food in your fridge for months if you know what you're doing so if you grow 10 feet of these radishes if you had a 10 foot size bed in your garden and you just sowed it with radishes about 30 days away from your first frost or something you could take the tip off once they're mature like this and store them in your fridge for two to three months no problem and these are great roasted you don't just have to eat them fresh like you know raw you can roast them with olive oil salt and pepper they're to die for that way it tastes really creamy braise them they're a root vegetable that you could do a lot of different things with um, that isn't just a salad so radishes are a game changer there's a million different kinds of radishes a lot of people talk about radishes with these kinds of videos but french breakfast in particular are really really fast 21 days um, some of the other radishes take a little bit longer but in general you should have a whole bunch of radishes in your seed packet arsenal because they're a great way to fill in space they yield a lot this 40 foot bed is going to yield us about 120 bunches, which is about 60 pounds of this. Um, so, you know, it, it's a really good high yielding crop that you could fill in at the last minute in your growing season and put a lot of food in your fridge or your root cellar or whatever you're doing. It can take a little bit of a frost, but in my experience, you don't want it to be pretty much lower than like a hard frost is going to make these taste kind of jello-y so you want to harvest them before it gets really really cold but like I said you could store these for a couple months in your fridge so it's a great last minute put food on the table crop radishes all right so another one that I grow all the time on the farm is arugula this is a big business crop for us. We, we sell a lot of this to restaurants and retail customers are starting to buy a lot more of it. And it's fairly popular now. You probably have heard of it. You see it at the grocery store. Uh, a lot of people are starting to grow it too. But it's a fairly spicy green that is sort of like a nutty spiciness. It's different than a mustard green. It's really delicious on sandwiches. That's what a lot of my restaurant customers do with it. It's great as a garnish on pizza. Um, you know, it took me a while to actually like it because it's not that great on its own. But when you couple it with like potatoes and stuff, it's really good. If you use it almost like an herb, it's delicious. Um, and it's 21 days to maturity. So it's really fast. And so this is a big one that I grow when I'm trying to fill in space because I always know I'm going to sell it pretty much. But 
it's a great one for your garden too for the same reason because it's 21 days to maturity and you can probably get away with two cuts of it if you time it right you know if you get it a month before your last frost you got a good chance of getting two two crops out of it because you can cut this one and it regrows that's pretty much what we do with every bed of arugula on the farm we cut it twice sometimes three times depending on the weather you know if you it grows better in the cool weather pretty much all of these quick growing crops are better in cold weather which in wyoming we have plenty of so it works great on our shoulder seasons but it's 21 days to maturity when you have a bare spot in your garden you know just even a spot like this because you don't need a whole you don't need a 50 foot bed of arugula for your garden you just need a small amount because it's going to regrow if you have one square foot of space in your garden just throw a couple of these in there and you will get really nice salad material that will probably last into November, December, even if you don't harvest it right away. It's gonna take a frost pretty well and it will probably last deep into your fall, winter time, you know, depending on your climate. In my climate, I don't think that would work so well. This, from my experience, is not as cold hardy, um, but it does, it will probably last until late October for me uh, after that. And once you get down into the teens, it doesn't last so well. But in most zones in America, south of like a zone five, I'm thinking this is going to last into November or December for you. And there's ways to protect it too if you don't want to uh, risk it getting killed by the frost. But it's a great pretty much guarantee you're going to get some kind of crop out of this. So arugula is a really big winner for filling in space at the last minute in your growing season. Got to grow arugula. Okay, so another one of my all-time favorite crops is Tokyo Bacana. And I've talked about this in a couple of my other YouTube videos because this is a big fall winter crop for us in our greenhouses but it works just as good outside in the field in this context so these shallots these two beds were filled with shallots up until monday today is thursday and i replanted them to tokyo bacana and mustard greens which is also pretty much the same days to maturity as tokyo bacana um the seed packet's saying 18 days to maturity, which actually is pretty accurate in my experience. This is the fastest growing crop that I grow in the ground. Microgreens are different, that's faster, but this is ridiculously fast growing. Um, and it's abundant, it's so thick and lush once it's mature. And I'm using it to kind of offset my lettuce shortage for a couple weeks in October, I think I'm gonna be short. And this is a great lettuce alternative um, because it's so fast. It tastes a little more cabbagey than lettuce, um, but it is delicious. And I think it actually tastes better than lettuce. And at 18 days to maturity, it's just something you got to have in your seed pack at Arsenal because you could always fill up a couple extra feet of this. Um, if you're running out of time in your growing season, you could probably get away with this in, you know, 25 days away from your first frost, you could plant these and even maybe a little bit later because they're still going to grow pretty decently after a frost. I've had, I, I keep on bouncing back my seeding date of this in a greenhouse because it's too big by November 3rd, which is the end of our it's the beginning of our time when nothing grows anymore. It's called the Persephone period. That's a whole nother subject for another video. But in my winter growing experience, this is always too big because it grows so fast. So this is a game changer garden crop for late season salad. And it's so cold hardy. This will last if I wanted to, I think I could probably get this to last till Christmas out here in our climate and we are very very cold november decembers without any frost protection i bet we could do it and i might try that this year we'll see stay tuned but tokyo bacana is a game changer um 
very, very popular. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular with market farms, but it's so easy. This amount of seed costs maybe $10, $15 or something, but this is enough for many different beds. Um, so for you to buy a garden amount of this would cost you a couple dollars for probably years. Um, it's such a game changer crop. Tokyo Bacana, you gotta grow it at home. All right, so the last crop I'm gonna talk about is Tatsoi. Tatsoi is a lot like spinach and we grow it as a winter crop fairly often. And it's not quite as cold hardy as spinach, but it grows really fast, way faster than spinach. It's a 25 day crop according to the seed packet. And in my experience, it's a little bit slower than like the Tokyo Bacana or arugula, but it's still a really great one because it's a little bit different than those other two. It's a, almost like a spinach. I would have put spinach in this video, but it usually takes another 15 days to grow really big and thick. It's harder to get that one to grow fast in my experience. So I like to grow it on the farm in these kind of seed flats and plan in advance. And I'm kind of already behind the eight ball on that, which is why I'm making this video. So actually I'm just realizing I probably should have planted some of this out in the field because this would have been a great backup plan for um, my shortage of spinach, but whatever. Uh, this is a great spinach alternative that's much faster um, and very, very cold hardy. It's as tough as Tokyo Bacana. I bet you could grow this in your garden and harvest it in December in a zone five climate. Um, very, very cold hardy. It's a winter crop for me in my greenhouses and my unheated greenhouses. I did have this survive negative 30 last year without any heat. Um, it wasn't really flawless after that. It was damaged, but we did still have some survive. And it also, when it bolts, it's really delicious. It tastes like broccoli almost. It's a, the flower heads are kind of like a broccoli. So you could probably have this in your field and in March or April or May, whenever it starts to warm up, it'll regrow in the spring for you and turn into this delicious broccoli kind of thing that uh, is a nice little bonus plan thing because this is so tough it's not going to winter kill very easily so um, really great one and it lasts when, when you're harvesting all of these greens fresh in say October or something they're going to last two weeks in your fridge no problem so another way to get around that you know overwhelm feeling of how am I going to eat all this stuff in time? You got to remember that this stuff is so fresh, especially I find that the colder it gets, the more natural preservative is going into the leaves and they just don't go bad as fast. I have spinach, winter spinach lasts for a month in my fridge. Once it's washed and dried correctly, it doesn't go bad nearly as fast as the stuff in the store. So, You'd be amazed at how long all of these salad greens will last in your fridge. Arugula, not so much. Tokyo Bacana, not so much. Tatsoi is one that will last a really long time in your fridge. Spinach for sure. But this is a great crop to fill in empty space around 30 days away from your first frost. Maybe a little earlier. But awesome last minute crop. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and share with anybody you think would find it interesting. And if you're interested in setting up a garden that can produce all the crops I'm talking about in this video and a whole lot more, I highly recommend you check out my gardening course at the link in the description. It's seven hours of video lessons where I explain how to set up a no dig garden and plant it basically how I plant my farm. So you can produce up to $1,200 worth of vegetables in 250 square feet. And that's at pretty low grocery store pricing. So I teach you how to produce high amounts of food in a very small space 
that doesn't take a lot of your time. You could probably spend an hour a month in your garden and still produce this amount of stuff with the techniques that I talk about in that course. So I go over everything from weed management, pest management, planting, setting up your garden, soil fertility, watering, crop planning. That is probably the most important part is crop planning, which is kind of what I'm talking about in this video and having an arsenal of crops that you can use to fill up your garden space with abundance and make your backyard into a grocery store. That's what my goal is with that course. I really hope you check it out and I will see you in the next one.